Jesus' most well-known female follower was Mary Magdalene. Her surname suggests that she was from here, the town of Magdala, five miles from Capernaum. Robert wants to find out what has made her such an iconic figure, the most well-known of Jesus' female followers. Director Franco Zeffirelli cast Anne Bancroft, renowned for her role as the seductress Mrs. Robinson in the film The Graduate for the role of Mary Magdalene. He chose to depict her as a prostitute. Do I sleep during the daytime, don't I? This is how Mary Magdalene has most commonly been portrayed. She has fascinated people for centuries. When we look at church art, Mary Magdalene is usually a young woman with red or blonde hair. It's loose and flowing. Her clothes are hanging off, perhaps. A breast is exposed. She's depicted as this kind of wanton groupie. And it strongly influenced the iconography of Mary in cards, in portraits, and in film. But there is no mention in any of the Gospels of Mary Magdalene being a prostitute. So where does this idea come from? The Gospel of Luke tells of a woman, a sinner, who anoints Jesus' feet. In the film, the sinner is Mary Magdalene. She washes Jesus' feet with oil and dries them with her hair. He then forgives her sins, and she repents. Daughter, your sins are forgiven you because of the greatness of your love. But the Gospel of Luke doesn't give the sinner a name. In a similar scene found in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, this woman is still not identified as Mary Magdalene. And what's more, in these versions, she's not even a sinner. Finally, in the Gospel of John, she is named as Mary of Bethany. The idea that this woman was Mary Magdalene and that she was a prostitute came from Pope Gregory the Great. In a series of sermons in the sixth century, he announced that she was the sinner who anointed Jesus' feet. But why would Gregory have made that claim? It seems that by associating Mary Magdalene with the repentant sinner and turning her into a prostitute, Pope Gregory was sort of muffling those traditions that had maintained that Mary Magdalene was herself an apostle of Jesus and that in accordance with that, that women could have lofty roles in the church. Mary's depiction as a repentant prostitute remained Roman Catholic doctrine for over 1,600 years until 1969, when they officially withdrew the claim. But the damage had been done. Her reputation as the bad girl turned good has remained. So what do we really know about the Mary Magdalene who appears in the Gospels? What was Mary Magdalene's relationship to Jesus? Um, one of the few things we know about her is what's depicted in this scene here, that, that Jesus cast out seven demons from her. This does seem to be the first encounter that she had with Jesus. Her name, Magdalene, could be significant it could simply mean she came from Magdala. But to first century Jews, it might have meant something more. In Aramaic, Magdal means tower. In the same way that Peter was Jesus' rock, Mary could also have been Jesus' tower, suggesting her importance and closeness to him. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and John name her as a witness to his crucifixion at a time when his main disciples had deserted him. She is also the first person to see the resurrected Jesus. This better understanding of Mary Magdalene presents us with a different image of Jesus' followers. 
He's now no longer surrounded by dubious women who are perhaps prostitutes, but far more respectable women, perhaps older women, who, um, who, who are helping out the movement. But of course it doesn't alter the basic idea that Jesus is still taking the message to tax collectors and sinners. It's still people on the margins that he's bringing into the kingdom of God.